Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the life and death of Mr. Culture Detective. Do you like me? Yes. Do you respect me? Yes. Will you ever forget about me? Never. But, but why? I'm, I mean, I'm such a loser. Some people don't get to choose who they are. Hey guys, what's up? It's a culture detective here investigating your favorite movies. And I just finished watching Citizen Kane. Released in the year 1941, directed by the one and only one of the greatest directors of all times, Orson Welles. The screenplay is written by uh, Herman Mankiewicz, and recently there is a movie called Mank, which is about Herman Mankiewicz. And this is one of the most, if not the most, influential film of all time. Every single filmmaker knows about this film and knows how important this film is to the history of film. This is one of those films that every single person in the world who wants to make movies and be involved in making movies have to watch. And this is incredibly important and the most hyped up movie or at least one of the most hyped up movies of all times now here's the thing this film here if you haven't heard of it I don't know what's wrong with you <laughs> I seriously don't know what's wrong with you if you haven't heard of Citizen freaking Kane and since this film is receiving so much hype. I'm going to honor this film. And to do that, I will immediately tell you the score. This film, I'm giving it a strong 9 out of 10. Okay, here's why. Here's why I don't think it is a 10. First of all, it is um, if I am a person watching this film in 1941, I would definitely think it's a 10. Hell, I would think it's an 11 or 12. But with how movies are nowadays, of course, the standards for the quality is higher. But still, that being said, that doesn't make this film any worse. In fact, this film is still one of the greatest cinematic achievements in human history. Not only is it uh, written incredibly innovatively, because essentially this film isn't some crazy gangster film or some musical or some comedy or something like that. It is a drama and it is a character study. And not a lot of films, especially Hollywood films back in the 1940s and 30s are as humane and as psychological as this one. This one really stood out as something that's not just entertaining, but something to analyze, something to ponder about, something to try to understand in a more deep and analytical fashion. And also, not only is this film narratively one of the most innovative when it comes to the camera movements and the camera angles, when it comes to the lighting, it's also very revolutionary because Orson Welles came from a theatrical background. He didn't go to any film school or anything, so he didn't really know the rules. So he had a character in front of the camera and then some character in the far back and... The camera sees them both in focus at the same time, and who cares? And because of this 
a lot of the movies in the future also sort of followed this and now it's become the norm because a lot of people, a lot of filmmakers have been following this formula for cinematography. Another thing about this film that's absolutely insane is the montage edits, which I always thought that montages are not a thing in the 1930s and 40s and you know maybe I'm wrong maybe there are montages or edits of the like back in the 1930s that I'm not aware of because I'm such a newbie but as far as the films I've seen from the 1940s I'm talking about the films I watched for my film noir course that I took last year Murder My Sweet, Double Indemnity, Detour, The Killers, um and also the 1950s. I haven't really seen a film in the 1940s handle montages this well. And it just kind of revolutionizes the way people and filmmakers edit films as well. Also, aside from that, the acting, the production design, the music, the everything is so so professional especially for someone who directed this movie when he's only 25 years old and it's only his directorial debut it's so professional i don't understand how how did some 25 year old theater guy manage to make such a great movie with such high production value I mean, just watch the last act of this film. Like, dude, how did you even pay for the props? Yeah, it's it's crazy. And then we have the dialogues. Usually dialogues are an essential part of film and every single word has to be uttered. But for some reason, the dialogues in this film feel really natural. They overlap. They mumble. It just feels so much more realistic than I totally have expected. And yeah, I guess I'm just going to leave it at that. There are so many things, so many great things about this movie. And I'm sure thousands upon thousands upon hundreds of thousands of people have analyzed the hell out of this movie. So you don't really need to hear me analyze this movie. We all know that this movie is important. We all know that this movie is influential. We all know that this movie is great. We all know that Orson Welles is a genius. And we all know that... Herman Mankiewicz writing a character study from the point of from the points of views of like three four different people and the story of a person his rise and his fall described in different angles is so special and so multi-dimensional it's truly fascinating. What I love about this movie also is that Charles Foster Kane, played by Orson Welles, is the main character of the film, but we really don't quite understand him even until the end. I mean, after listening to all these people talk about him and describe his life from rise to fall, I mean, sure, we do get an idea of what kind of person Charles Foster Kane is like, but at the same time, he, he feels kind of human and kind of not at the same time because of how he's being described by other people inside the film. And that just makes his character so much more realistic. And it just makes his film so much more special and so much more insightful and introspective. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm feeling, uh, again, I've said this, but it's a strong 9 out of 10. And yay. I really don't understand why my life has become to this. This, this pain, this, this suffering. I, I really can't. It's okay, don't worry, everything will start over in the next morning, it will be 2018 again.
2018? Born in 2002, September 7th, Culture Detective was nothing but a naive, innocent young boy. He has made a multitude of attempts to live a fruitful life by reaching out, but nevertheless he fails again and again. Still clenching with the last droplets of hope, his dreams and ambitions surpass his capabilities. His fascination and interest in a certain mysterious girl has proven to be utterly meaningless, leaving him more lonesome and defeated than ever. And at last, on May 11th, 2020, at precisely 1.00 p.m. in Hong Kong time, Mr. Culture Detective has passed away and shall never be reborn.